Anchor 9. Commit to a daily prayer life and grow my relationship with the Father. What would happen if I studied the Bible as a book of prayers? How would that change my life? How would that change your life? Imagine knowing how to pray God's antidote for every problem you'll ever face. Because you need to know how to build up your arsenal of weapons in prayer to combat what the enemy, this world, and your own destructive nature throws at you. Charles Spurgeon said, If your faith in Christ doesn't lead you to pray, have nothing to do with it. Get rid of it and ask God to help you to begin again. So important. Now, there are hundreds of prayers recorded in the Bible. And each and every one of them can teach you something about the heart of God and how you can pray more effectively. So why is it important to commit to a daily prayer life? Well, I believe that the answer is found in the completion of Anchor 9, to grow my relationship with the Father. So I pose this question to you before we get started with Anchor 9. What is your purpose? Why are you here? Well, in short, you're here because God loves you. God created you for His pleasure and His purposes. And God wanted a family with you in mind. Your purpose in life is to respond to the love of God by accepting what God's Son, Jesus Christ, did for you and then live your life for Him. You are saved by grace and grace alone. It is a gift and not something earned so no one can boast. Jesus Christ is God's greatest gift to us. Salvation, forgiveness, freedom, eternal life, purpose, identity, power are part of a long list of benefits and blessings we receive when we, when we receive God's Son as a gift. God says, accept my Son and I write your name in heaven's guest list never to be erased. God bypasses the written code that stood opposed to you and signs an executive order decreeing your, your citizenship in heaven. That's a gift. That's a great gift. And to accomplish all of this, Jesus depended on a few things that are embedded into our 12 anchors of hope. He depended on God's Word. He depended on the Holy Spirit. He depended on His Father. And He depended on the power of prayer. And when you study the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, there was something Jesus could not live without. And that was His relationship with His Father. He needed to talk to His Father. How did He do that? Through prayer. He needed guidance from his father. How did he do that? Through prayer. The father made sure he didn't send his one and only son in the world to fail the world, but to save the world. The father made sure Jesus had everything he needed, his word, the Holy Spirit, an open line of communication with his father made possible through the gift of prayer. Now, if Jesus needed God's word, his Father, the Holy Spirit, and prayer to complete His mission? How much more do you think we need those things in our lives to complete the mission that God has given us? So imagine if you became a person that knew how to make God's Word the authority over your life, depended on the power of the Holy Spirit, became relentless in your love and desire to grow your relationship with the Father, and became a person of prayer, knowing that nothing happens in heaven's world that is not jump-started by prayer. How different would your life be if you looked at prayer as a gift and not a spiritual discipline or something we do every now and then? Have you considered what a gift God has given us through prayer? The purpose of prayer is to get to know the God of the universe, your Father, in a personal way, by spending time with Him, waiting on Him, being in His presence, and trusting Him. And when you commit to a daily prayer life in full surrender to God, you'll become like Jesus in purpose and personality. And when you start shifting your prayer life by God, Asking God to make you act like Jesus, love like Jesus, forgive like Jesus, bless people like Jesus, see people through the eyes of Jesus, then get ready because your prayer life is going to soar to new heights. But the greatest benefit and purpose of prayer is to grow your relationship with the Father. Now, there are so many reasons why we should pray. When we get into trouble, we should pray. The Bible says, call upon me. In the day of trouble, and I will rescue you, Psalm 50, 15. So who do you call when you're in trouble? Do you go to the throne or do you go to the phone? 
James 5.13 says, If any of you in trouble, he should pray. That person should pray. And as great as that sounds, there are many reasons why we don't call on God when we're in trouble. We just don't. And I need to lay a balanced and biblical foundation of prayer so that you can come boldly to God with faith and confidence, knowing that God hears you when you pray. You see, He's the creator of the universe who formed you to have a loving relationship that you spend time with Him in His presence. And you do that by praying to Him, listening to Him, waiting on Him, trusting in Him, surrendering to Him, believing in Him, running after Him, and becoming like Him in all that you do. You will, you will never receive God's best presence until you learn to love being in His presence. And when we get honest with God, that is when life gets better. And we experience the healing power of Jesus Christ in our lives. God says the same thing about prayer. It says in Isaiah 1, 15 through 17, When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Psalm 66, 18, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened, and he heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. You see, if you've been part of this encounter uh, journey for a while, you know that we don't approach God on our good merits, but by his great grace. We don't approach God in prayer because of the good things that we've done, but by the finished work of Christ that was done for us. Now, does that mean that we can willfully sin and expect God to hear our prayers? Of course not. Well, he's always going to hear our prayers. The question is, does he answer them? It means that when we do sin, we need to get honest with that sin. Get honest with God. Turn from it by asking God for forgiveness. That's why 1 John 1, 9 and Romans 8, 1 are two sword scriptures you're going to need in your prayer arsenal to fight off Satan's discouragement and lies all designed to keep you from praying. Lies topped off with guilt and condemnation. Lies that tell you that God is not listening, that you are not good enough to pray. So let's look at these two power verses out loud together. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Romans 8, 1. Therefore now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And when you are not afraid to come to God in prayer, trusting what he's done for you, then you can come boldly to the throne of grace, like it says in Hebrews 4, 16, which says, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, and there we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. And discover the truth of what God will do when we pray to him that he promises in Jeremiah 33, 3, which he says, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you wonderful and marvelous things that you know nothing about. So before we talk about the how-to of prayer, we should talk about what it is. What is prayer? Well, communication that builds relationships is dialogue. Genuine prayer has all the qualities and characteristics of a deeply meaningful conversation between two people, God the Father and us. The end result of intentional dialogue can be wonderful. We know this to be true in our relationships with other people. The same is true when we communicate intentionally with God. We know Him more fully. We can understand Him better. We can feel more at home in His presence. And we can find better reasons to praise Him more and more and have a deeper relationship with Him because prayer is the key to a relationship with God. Now, intentional dialogue where God ultimately establishes and deepens our relationship with Him and the purpose of prayer is that we might know God better, experience more of His love, and have an abiding awareness of His work in our lives. You see, talking to God doesn't just build relationship. Communicating with God, both speaking and listening, does. A relationship with God, of course, is very personal. In fact, it's the most intimate relationship you can ever know. See, nobody knows you like God knows you. Nobody loves you like God loves you. Nobody desires good for your life more than God. And in prayer, you will soon discover not only more about God, but more about yourself as God's beloved child. 
There is no more exciting or enriching experience. Because prayer is intensely personal, there are no universal formulas. The specifics of your prayer relationship with God are as distinctive as any other aspect of your life and your ability to communicate. Ultimately, prayer is to be experienced, not studied. It's to be experienced and pursued and a relationship to be valued beyond all others. Again, the main purpose of prayer is that we might get to know the God of the universe better and grow in our relationship with him. And nothing will build your relationship with God like a committed prayer life. The more you pray, the more you talk to God, the more you talk to God, the more time you're spending with him, growing your relationship, and that builds intimacy and prayer builds that intimacy. Prayer is simply the life bread of communication that we have with God. True prayer is when our will is aligned with the will of God and we pray accordingly and prayer is our connection to heaven and heaven's connection to us and that is why we should always keep the lines open. True praying is not overcoming God's reluctance but laying hold of his willingness and prayer is essential to knowing God and growing spiritually as breathing is to living. Prayer is how we let God fight our battles and we get to watch. Prayer does what you can't do for someone else. See prayer tells your problems how big your God is instead of, instead of telling God how big your problems are. Prayer is how we remind ourselves that we are powerless without God. Again, prayer is conversational. Don't try and be someone that you're not when you start praying to God. You don't have to impress God with your words. You impress God with your humility, your faith, and your reverence. Speaking of personal, one of the most intimate acts of love is to kiss someone. You know, there's something about a kiss. There's something beautiful and loving about a kiss. And I want to suggest to you tonight to kiss God every day with your prayers. The simple acrostic to help you pray a personal loving kiss of a prayer to God every day so that your relationship with the Father grows. The K stands before, it stands for kneel before God. See, prayer is a great opportunity to express your gratitude to, to God. You can thank Him praise Him, and worship Him for who He is. And these are often the best dialogues between you and God. And as you acknowledge God's greatness, His love washes over you. See, you can kneel physically before Him, or you can bow in your heart spiritually before Him. See, your posture is not as important as your motive. And whether you lie prostrate on the floor because of His holiness overwhelms you or you look up to the sky because you earnestly raise your eyes to heaven to acknowledge him, the position of your heart is the thing that touches the heart of God. He will hear the prayers of one that has a pure heart and has motives that are surrendered to his will. And that's the K. The I stands for invite God into your day. Invite him into your life, your pain, your heart. Invite him and give. And you say, God, I give you full permission to be Lord over my day, my goals, my plans, my problems, my concerns, my meetings. You just wake up every day and you, and you recite Romans 12, 1 and 2 every day. And the first S stands for self-evaluation. Well, Lord, here's how I'm doing. Here's what I'm doing well. Here's what I'm doing bad. I need your forgiveness here. Thank you for your grace here. Thank you for your love and power. Thank you for doing this for me. Sort of a little evaluation every day. And the last S stands for supplication. That simply means your list and what you need to pray for. That's your needs, your concerns, your life. Most importantly, your prayers for everything going on and, and even prayers for other people, which is called intercession. And then after you kiss God, you should never end your prayer time asking God for things, but you should end your prayer time waiting on God for things by living out Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. And here's how you do that. You pray for your list and other people. And then you ask God to speak to you. And you ask God, Lord, is there anything you want to talk to me about? Is there anything you want me to change? Stop doing, start doing? Is there a person you want me to bless? And you just be quiet. You enjoy God's presence. You just sit there. Maybe visualize sitting with God, Him holding you. You don't be in a hurry. And you learn how to spend precious time with God. And this is how you can start your day and learn how to spend time in God's presence. And a couple of things for thought as you take this journey of prayer. See, the general will for your life is always found in scriptures. 
The specific will for your life is found when you pray God's word and wait for God's confirmation, the Holy Spirit's leading, and his peace in your life. It's all done in the atmosphere of prayer. Jesus said in John 10, 27, My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 1 John 5, 14, this is a great promise. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So I want to pray for you right now as we close this session. Father, I just pray uh, that the prayer life of every person watching this lesson would just be lit on fire. And you will hear every single prayer. And I pray that you would take everyone's prayer life to the next level. And I just pray that you would be the victor of the outcome of everyone's circumstance and that they would grow their relationship with you and that you would reveal yourself to them in marvelous and miraculous ways. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.